Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with the second part of my review of the Kennerton Audio Thrower headphone. Uh, this is Kennerton's flagship headphone and um, I did a part one to this review which was basically a first impressions video way back in December and the reason it's taken me so long is to be honest I haven't really had anything worthy of comparing to this headphone to really be able to judge it um, not until recently so I finally I got a couple of other flagship headphones in the uh, Phobos from Urzatish and the um, Imperium from Meza and um, I finally have something, you know, kind of on the same level to compare these two so I can give a better opinion of, you know, how good I think this headphone is. So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick look. And um, this video, I'm going to spend less time showing you the headphone and more time talking about the sound compared to the first part of this uh, review. So if you want a better look at the headphone itself, more detailed, uh, take a look at my part one. And um, anyway, I'm going to dive a little deeper into the sound this time because I've had a lot more time with this headphone. Uh, first of all, the Kennerton Audio Equipment <clears throat> is out of St. Petersburg, Russia. And the Thror is available in several different types of wood and the price depending on what type of wood you choose runs from $3,335 up to $3,681 uh, this is this one here is made of zebrano wood and it has black leather for the ear pads and the headband and this model currently sells for $3,408 uh, the Thror is a full-size open back headphone with a planar magnetic driver. Uh, the driver itself is 80 millimeters in diameter. This headphone has an impedance of 42 ohms and has a sensitivity of 100 decibels at 1 milliwatt. Uh, the ear cups are, this is not a veneer, this is a solid piece of wood that's um, carved and shaped into what you see here and uh, the ear pads which you can see are tapered uh, the ear pads are real lambskin leather and the headband is also covered with a real lambskin leather and the head strap uh, the yokes and the adjustment mechanism on these are all made of aluminum and um, the grills I'm not positive what these grills are um, I don't know if this is a plastic material or some type of resin um, anyway the connectors on these for your cable are 4 pin mini XLRs and that would be the same as uh, Urzatish uses on their Mania and their Phobos and I believe um, I know the the Meza Imperium also uses a 4 pin mini XLR I know for sure that the Kennerton and the Urzatish are compatible you can switch the cables back and forth I haven't tried the Meza but I'm assuming it's also interchangeable um, the headphones are adjusted with a thumb screw you can loosen and this raises and lowers the yoke to adjust it for your head size um, it also if I can show you this um, when you loosen this it also can be uh, rotated front to back which angles your ear cups either you know brings the front of the ear cups in or out vice versa so that adjusts the pressure uh, you can lessen the pressure on the front of your ear or increase it or you know vice versa the back of the ear and I really like that feature because I personally don't like too much pressure on the front of my ear around my jaw bone that actually gets irritating to me for a while 
or after a while so anyway and also you know the yolks swivel in this direction so um, the build quality I just wanted to mention that pretty quick um, the build quality of every Kennerton headphone I've seen so far has just been outstanding and the Thoreau is no exception I mean just flawless build quality just everything is perfect I mean not nothing is lacking nothing looks like it was rushed I mean just absolute perfection and in my opinion this is a beautiful headphone um, according to Kennerton this headphone weighs 480 grams and but according to my kitchen scale it comes in a little bit heavier at 499 grams and that would be without the cable and you know with the ear pads on it as you see it uh, as far as comfort uh, I find this headphone very comfortable <clears throat> it's not the lightest headphone in the world I mean um, most some full-size headphones are you know maybe 40 60 grams lighter it's a little bit heavier than some the weight doesn't bother me at all it's well distributed um, the ear pads are very nice very high quality but some of the synthetic leathers are actually a little bit softer so um, you know in my opinion this is the very a very comfortable headphone but it's not the last word in comfort I mean um, comparing it to say the Hi-Fi Man Aria it the Aria is a little bit lighter and the ear pads are a little bit softer and um, it I would say it's like that's probably one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever tried and it's slightly more comfortable than this but you know um, but I have no issues at all I'm very happy with the comfort of this headphone uh, as far as um, what equipment I use to test this headphone and I've got a lot of time in this like I said I've had this thing for about nine months now and I've got probably hundreds of hours of time in, on it now and know this headphone very well so anyway um, just you know see let you know what equipment I'm using it's, you know for to give you my opinion on the sound of it first of all um, I'm using mostly CDs um, I'm using a Cambridge Audio 540C CD player as a transport only um, running a digital signal into a benchmark DAC1 and then uh, analog signal from there to um, one of many amps I've tried with this headphone. I've actually used at least seven different amps with this headphone. Um, everything from the Benchmark HPA2, the Audio GD Master 9, uh, the Wells Audio Milo, the SPL Fonitor XE, the Felix Audio Echo, which is a OTL type tube amp, uh, the Kennerton Atlas, which is a hybrid type of tube amp, and the um, Urzatish Basilius Tilia. And to be honest, every single one of these amps has worked very well with this headphone, and um, I get a little more into that in a couple of minutes. Um, as far as the sound of this headphone, um, basically all I have to say about this headphone well the most prominent thing about this headphone is its neutrality this is just an extremely neutral headphone this headphone does not color the sound it does not boost the bass it doesn't boost the treble it has a perfectly flat sounding um, tone balance to me um, it doesn't sound warm of neutral it doesn't sound cold of neutral to me in my opinion this is just probably about the most neutral sounding headphone that I've ever heard um, like I said it just does not color the sound in any way at all um, as far as bass and treble extension I would say the bass extension is very good um, it goes down low. It, it's not the hardest hitting in the lower bass because like I said it doesn't emphasize the bass at all. This is a very neutral headphone but it does go low. The sub bass is there. 
On the other end, the treble, um, no roll off at all that I can hear. It has very good treble extension. And um, so, yeah, both ends, very good. I mean, you know, no, no roll off at either end that I can hear. Um, going into the, you know, the sound itself, uh, the sub bass, like I said, it goes down very deep, but it's not emphasize it's not overemphasized at all it's it's you're gonna hear what's on the recording this is not a bass head headphone this is um, I think the idea when uh, designing this headphone is to make the most neutral headphone possible that's going to play back exactly what's on the recording so the sub bass is there but it's not overemphasized at all same thing with the mid bass the mid bass is very present it's solid it's extremely tight it's very well detailed um, but not emphasized and definitely not boomy or muddy or anything like that <clears throat> and um, just once again neutral is a way to describe the base of this headphone uh, the mids and treble once again very neutral no no peaks, no valleys that I can hear. I would describe the mids and treble as dead on neutral and exceptionally clear and detailed on this headphone. And um, as far as that, as far as clarity, detail, resolution, um, this headphone is exceptional in my opinion. It's just, um, will bring out every tiny detail on a recording like no other headphone I've ever heard. Um, the really strong point of this headphone though is uh, the soundstage and imaging. Uh, the soundstage isn't huge. It's very large. It's not the largest I've ever heard. That would probably be the Hi-Fi Man Aria. But um, the Aria has a little more width and a little more height to the soundstage, but this headphone actually has more depth. And what I really like about this headphone is it's not only the depth, but it has a very three-dimensional layered sound to the soundstage. Um, just, you know, not only are sounds way off in the distance, but they're at multiple different layers, different distances. And um, it, like I said, it just gives it this three-dimensional sound that I haven't heard another headphone duplicate. Uh, the um, Urzatish Phobos does a pretty good job of duplicating that but it doesn't get quite there where this headphone does. I mean, this just has the most three-dimensional sound I've heard of any headphone so far. Um, the imaging is just spot on, just um, extremely precise. Um, I can locate every in instrument. You know, if I'm listening to orchestral music, I can pinpoint every instrument in the orchestra exactly where it's at better than any other headphone I've heard. Um, as far as dynamics, uh, it's actually a pretty dynamic headphone. Not the most dynamic, but um, in my experience, uh, dynamic driver headphones seem to be a little more dynamic than planar magnetic headphones, but this, of any planar magnetic headphone I've heard, I think this is the most dynamic of any of them I have heard. Uh, as far as amping, this, this headphone is actually very easy to amp. It's um, not the easiest headphone to drive. I mean, there are more efficient headphones. Most of those would be planar magnet, or I mean, I'm sorry, dynamic. Um, but this is actually very efficient for a planar magnetic design. And um, I told you earlier that I've used about seven different amps with this headphone. And actually, um, works very well with any of them. Um, I haven't found an amp that ran out of power. Um, switching from amp to amp really doesn't change the sound that much. Uh, it can change the sound a little bit. Um, a neutral amp like the um, HPA2 from Benchmark or the Audio GD Master 9 or the Fonitor um, XE, both, all, any of those will bring out the extreme detail with this headphone and not color the sound at all. Um, the one that changes it the most 
would be the Felix Audio Echo and that amp can be in the OTL tube type amp can change the sound quite a bit with some headphones um, just makes a slight change with this headphone but what it does is it warms up the mid-range just a little bit um, especially vocals and it also gives this headphone just a little bit more bass and sub bass uh, emphasizes it just a little bit so warms it up just a little bit and makes it just slightly bassy of neutral uh, the Wells Audio Milo also kinda did the same thing but to a lesser extent has a little bit of a tube sound and um, warms up the headphone just a little bit makes it a little bit more musical sounding and um, a little less analytical on some recordings uh, and the Erzatish Bacillus Tilia also the same way um, kind of a tube sounding amp even though it's solid state and warms this headphone up just a little bit and gives it just a little more bass and sub bass so if you want this headphone to be a little bit on the warm side of neutral and have a slight emphasis on the bass which a lot of people like that then um, a tube amp may be the way to go with this headphone uh, as far as music um, this isn't my first choice for uh, rock or like electronic music I actually prefer the uh, Kenerton Valley which has a bit of emphasis in the bass especially the mid bass and to me that's just a better headphone for that type of music um, of course you can equalize this I've tried the shit Loki 4 band equalizer with this and if I give this three maybe four decibels of boost at 20 Hertz then it sounds very good with that type of music but um, being very neutral it just, um, you know, I prefer a headphone that's a little on the bassy side of neutral for rock and electronic music. But um, what this headphone really shines at, in my opinion, would be jazz and acoustical and orchestral music. And um, I'll give you a quick look at a few of the uh, CDs that I've used with this headphone that I think all of these sound exceptional with this headphone. This would be R.E.M. Murmur, uh, Sinead O'Connor, I Don't Want What I Haven't Got, Natalie Merchant, Tiger Lily, um, Sarah McLaughlin, uh, Mirrorball, which is a live recording, 10,000 Maniacs, um, live unplugged MTV version, Nora Jones, Feels Like Home, Jewel, uh, Pieces of You, Enya, Shepherd Moon, The Cranberries, um, what is this? Everyone else is doing it, so why can't we? Some Tori Amos, um, Tales of a Librarian, Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair, um, some Tchaikovsky. Uh, this has the um, uh, Nutcracker Suite on it. And um, seriously, I have not found another headphone that makes me feel more like I'm right there, sitting there listening to the music live. This headphone is just incredible for that. Uh, the Sunday's Blind. Uh, some Super Tramp. I guess this is the best of. CD and uh, Paul Simon Graceland so anyway I just wanted to give you an idea of what kind of music I've listened to with this headphone because um, you know if I don't tell you what I'm listening to my opinions really don't make mean much at all I mean they don't matter you know if I tell you that this headphone doesn't you know produce enough detail or the sound stage or whatever if I'm listening to nothing but say electronic dance music I can't tell you if this headphone you know sounds real when I'm listening to orchestral music you know or real acoustic instruments you know so for me to be credible as a reviewer I think you need to have an idea of what I'm listening to you know to, to know if you're going to experience the same thing that I am and agree on it so anyway um, 
like I said, um, I really like this headphone with acoustical and, um, and orchestral music. It just, that is what this headphone was designed for. I think when they developed this headphone, they designed it to have the most perfectly flat, neutral tone balance that they could, and that just works really well with the exceptional detail retrieval this headphone has to just make um, acoustical mu instruments just sound so real. And that's what this headphone is all about. Um, the strong points of this headphone are the detail and that three-dimensional sound stage and just the realism. I've never heard another headphone that makes, especially female vocals, sound so real. I mean, I just feel like I'm right there, three feet away, listening to someone live when I listen to this headphone. Uh, female vocals just sound less like a recording and more like real with this headphone than I've heard anywhere else. Um, so does this headphone have any weak points? Um, it's slightly heavy, but I wouldn't trade that for the build quality or the sound quality. So it's not really an issue with me. Uh, comfort, it's not the most comfortable headphone in the world but it is very comfortable and once again I wouldn't trade a little bit of comfort for the build quality or um, you know the the sound quality of this headphone yeah the Hi-Fi Manorea is a little bit lighter and a little more comfortable but it's basically made of plastic it's a great sounding headphone don't get me wrong but I mean it doesn't have anywhere close to the build quality or the materials that this headphone has and I, you know, I have no problem with a little extra weight and, you know, not quite as comfortable to have this kind of build quality in a headphone, you know, instead of an all plastic headphone. Um, the, like I said, the, the strong points of this are its looks, its build, uh, the sound stage, the 3D layering is just outstanding and the realism just makes me feel like I'm there like no other headphone I've ever heard um, so bottom line do I recommend it I would say that depends what you're looking for in a headphone what type of sound you want if you're a bass head if you want a overemphasized bass if you listen to primarily rock or electronic dance music, that thing, that type of thing, no, this is probably not the right headphone for you. If you want a dead-on neutral headphone that doesn't color the music, that is extremely detailed, that's going to reveal everything on the recording, um, this headphone could be perfect for you. I mean, that's what this headphone is all about. It is about reproducing what is on that recording without coloring the sound, without emphasizing anything, and just ultimate detail retrieval where there is nothing on that recording that this headphone will not find and reveal. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for, then yes, I very highly recommend this headphone. In fact, I mean, like I said, um, for acoustical music and vocals and all that, this is without a doubt my favorite headphone. And, you know, there's a couple headphones that I've heard that are competing with it, but still, you know, not on the same level. So anyway, um, but they have their strong points. And, I, and to be honest with you, um, I'm going to try in the next uh, week or two, I'm going to try to get a comparison out. And it's not really going to be a shootout because headphone, once you get up to this point, these headphones don't really have any strong weak points, but they do have different uh, strong points. And I'm going to try to do a three-way comparison of the Kennerton Thror, the Urzatish Phobos and the uh, Meza Imperium, which I've only had for about a week. And um, three, all three outstanding headphones in my opinion, but all three, uh, they look very different, they're designed very different, and the sound is different. 
And um, so I'm not going to try to tell you in my comparison which is the best because that's going to depend on what you're looking for. So what I'm going to try to do is do a comparison where I compare the three, point out their strong points, and let you decide which headphone would probably be the best for you. So anyway, I'm going to try to get that out in a week or two. And in the meantime, I'm going to wrap up this video. And once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And once again, you're all welcome to join us over at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. Thank you.